Good morning everybody. Welcome back to the Morning Bible. My hair is flat and weird looking because I've just taken my hat off that I was wearing yesterday. I'm recording uh, yesterday and today's video is in one go, so hence the, the funny hair. Um, I hope you're all doing well. We've just got a short um, couple of little passages to finish off uh, Luke 20, so let's just jump into them um, and see what passage has to say. The first one's quite funny actually because it calls me out on something I did yesterday, so let's have a look. Um, so yesterday Jesus just finished um, refuting, I almost said recruiting, he didn't recruit them, he refuted the Sadducees who came to him um, trying to disprove the resurrection. Um, they had a question about a brother having seven different wives um, and Jesus says no, here's why, that doesn't make sense. Um, and then he explains something about how the new resurrection is going to work. And these Sadducees are kind of left, stood there speechless. And so the reason why I'm explaining all that is because this passage starts off pretty much continuing on, almost on a like split sentence level from that. So we've got these guys who are sort of stood there in silence going, oh, okay, this guy's just, this Jesus guy has just proved us wrong. And so then, but Jesus said to them, how can they say that the Christ is David's son? For David himself says in the book of Psalms, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. David thus calls him Lord. So how is he his son? So Jesus has called me out on something I did at the beginning of yesterday's video. I called Jesus the son of David <laughs> because that's what a lot of people called him. That's one of the titles that gets attributed to Jesus a lot. Um, and that's because uh, if you flick back to Jesus's genealogy at the beginning of Luke, um, it runs through uh, loads of biblical figures and one of them is David, one of the big figures is David. Um, several centuries before Jesus um, walked, but you know, in Jewish tradition um, you could still be called the son of David because you are a son of his you know, genealogy, essentially. So Jesus is saying, how can they say that the Christ is David's son? So he's talking about himself here when he says the Christ. How can they say that I'm David's son? Um, how can they call me David's son? For David himself says in the book of Psalms, and so he quotes something that David says, um, writing his poetry um, in the Old Testament. It, and the quote he uses is, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So here there's two uses of the word Lord. There's the Lord and my Lord. Um, and that's a little bit confusing, especially because they're both capitalized. So there's the Lord, when he says that, he's referring to God the Father, um, and my Lord, by saying that, he's referring to Jesus. He's uh, he's referring to the Christ. And this is a figure who hasn't come yet. Um, David's sort of looking ahead to the future. He says, the Lord, God the Father, said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. So this is something we see about Jesus quite a lot. Um, God calls him to sit at his right hand. That's what's spoken over him. Um, so David's talking about Jesus here, and it says, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Um, but what Jesus picks up in this is that David is referring to him as my Lord. Even though Jesus is a descendant of David, he's a son of David, um, David still calls him my Lord. And so Jesus is sort of challenging people who say he's the son of David. He's saying, well, David's saying, you know, I'm, I'm not his son, I'm his Lord. Um, and so what's Jesus doing by drawing attention to this? Because on the one hand, it seems like he's almost saying he's not from David's bloodline. That's not what Jesus is doing. He's not refuting that. He's saying, um, you need to sort of understand who I am really, because I'm not just a descendant of David. I'm not just someone who's born in his family, because there have been generations and generations of descendants from him. Um, I am someone different. I am his Lord. Um, Jesus is pointing out that he is set apart from David's family. Even though he's a son of David, he is set apart from that. And so when people just call him the son of David, when that's the title they use on him, Jesus is saying, actually, you're not understanding who I am. You don't see who I am, really. And so he's challenging people. He's kind of shaking the people who are near him, who is like, yeah, yeah, son of David. He's like, no, I'm so much more than that. You need to be aware of that. Um, so that's a good little challenge. I think that's one that we sometimes need for ourselves. We need to shake ourselves. Like, who, who are we... How are we boxing Jesus today? What are we? What limitations are we putting on him? Are we saying, oh, he lived 2,000 years ago? Or are we saying he's alive now? Are we saying, you know, he did these miracles back then? Or are we saying he's doing miracles today? Um, it's, the same, it's the same kind of challenge coming through from that. Um, and then we've just got one tiny little passage to finish off uh, Luke chapter 20, which we'll just go through quickly now. 
and it goes back to the scribes. It says, And in the hearing of all the people, Jesus said to his disciples, so everyone's in the temple, there'll be the chief priests, the Sadducees, the scribes, his own followers, random passers-by, everyone's going to be there. Uh, in the presence of all these people, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in the long robes and love greetings in the marketplace and the best seats in the synagogue and the places of honour at feasts, who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greatest condemnation. So Jesus is putting out a really strong warning here. He's saying you need to be so careful of um, the religious leaders around here who um, are doing this because they get to wear the fancy clothes and everyone knows who they are and they're really important. They get these fancy seats and they get all these wonderful things are given to them, but their hearts are wrong. Their hearts are totally in the wrong place. They're doing it because they want these things. Um, the, the two criticisms that he points out of them um, is who devour widows' houses. So we mentioned yesterday how a woman without a husband and um, back in these times um, was in real, real trouble. That's why they had the law in place in the Old Testament for women to marry um, the brother of their husband because it gave them financial stability and support because they wouldn't have had any possessions or any wealth built up on their own. Um, and so a widow's house, this is a house that is um, in great suffering already, that has very little to give, almost nothing to give, and they devour them. He says these pe kind of people devour widow's houses. So that's one, cri one criticism that he gives them. And the other, he says, and for a pretense make long prayers. So he's saying people who show off their relationship with God just by making long prayers. Um, Jesus does this a couple of times actually, he criticises people for making long prayers in public. He's saying that shouldn't be how you pray, you shouldn't be stood up in front of a whole crowd of people just giving this long, super eloquent prayer where you're saying all these amazing buzzwords, and you're doing all these great things and you're really showing off how connected you are to God. Prayer shouldn't be like that. Jesus tells us to keep prayers simple, to keep prayers honest um, and to have a genuine dialogue with God, a private dialogue with God. We're called to pray in private a lot of the time. And that isn't saying that um, there isn't a space for communal prayer, there isn't a space for praying with other people, but you need to make sure you know who you're praying for when you pray. You shouldn't be praying for the people around you um, so that they can look at you and go, ooh, he's pretty good at this. You should be praying because you're talking to God and whatever form that takes, that's the form that it should be in. Um, and he says they will receive the greatest condemnation because they have all the appearance, all the facade um, of being good, righteous people. But in reality, they're not at all. Sorry, my drumsticks are falling over as I reach for my bookmark. Um, so, yeah, that finishes off chapter 20. Um, it's a good little chapter. We finally got Jesus' arrival. And now he goes around Jerusalem basically shaking things up. He gives a couple of prophecies. He gets in a bit of trouble and things start to really escalate and accelerate. Um, and so I can't wait to get through the rest of it. But for now, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you all tomorrow. Much love. Bye bye bye.